Okay, in this video, we're going to look at the internal temperature sensor on board the Atmega 328P microcontroller, which is on the Arduino Nano. Now, a lot of people use this internal temperature sensor to measure the ambient temperature of the room, but it's not meant for that. It's meant to measure the internal temperature of the microcontroller itself, the internal die or substrate of the microcontroller. Because the Atmega 328P microcontroller has a maximum and minimum operating temperature range. And it's up to the user to keep it within that range. Because the internal junction temperature is always hotter than the ambient temperature. Now the Atmega 328P-AU, which is on board the Arduino Nano, has an operating temperature of minus 40 degrees Celsius to plus 85 degrees Celsius. And that's the industrial operating temperature range. Now there's also an automotive uh, version it's the Atmega 328P-15AZ, and that has an operating temperature range of minus 40 degrees Celsius to plus 125 degrees Celsius. So the internal temperature sensor is a tool that enables us to monitor the internal temperature of the microcontroller. Okay, the actual temperature sensor on board the Atmega 328P microcontroller is just a diode. Now this diode is on the die or substrate of the chip itself. We can see in the diagram the diode and it's forward biased by a current source so we get a voltage drop across the diode. Now this voltage will change with temperature change. It will change one millivolt per degree Celsius and it's very linear. Now this voltage is fed into ADC8 which is channel 8 of the analog to digital converter and we use the 1.1 volt internal band, band gap reference voltage as our VREF. So we'll get back an ADC value which corresponds to temperature. Now it's up to us to calibrate this ADC value to the internal junction temperature of the microcontroller. Okay here's the data sheet of the Atmega 328P microcontroller. Now this is the automotive spec. And I'm in the temperature measurement section and if you read the paragraph it says the accuracy of the temperature measurement is plus or minus 10 degrees Celsius. Now that's because the internal voltage reference, the 1.1 volt band gap uh, voltage reference, drifts with temperature and the temperature sensor output varies from chip to chip. Now if you look at the very bottom we have a temperature to ADC value chart and it gives us a room temperature in our two extremes. So we have minus 40 degrees Celsius and then plus 25 and then plus 125 degrees Celsius. And below each temperature reading, we have the output, the ADC output. So we could plot this on a graph. And then we, we can extract a temperature to ADC equation. Okay, I took the three temperature values versus ADC values, which I got off the data sheet. And I plotted them on a graph. And you can see it's pretty linear. Now on the x-axis, we got the actual temperature. And on the y-axis, we have the ADC value. Now from this graph, I can extract a temperature to ADC equation, which I can embed into my code, which will give me the internal junction temperature of the microcontroller itself. Okay, here are the temperature values versus ADC values, which I got off the data sheet, and I plotted it on a graph. Now if you have two points on a line on a graph, you could calculate the equation of the line using the slope-intercept form, and here's the equation. And that simplifies down to x equals 0.782y minus 250, where x equals the temperature and y equals the ADC value. Now I'm going to use integer math in my code in my microcontroller. So x is going to turn out to be temperature equals ADC value times 782 divided by 1000 minus 250. So I'm going to take this equation and embed it into my, into my microcontroller. So when I get an ADC value, I can calculate the internal junction temperature of the microcontroller. Okay, here's the block diagram of the analog to digital converter inside the Atmega 328P microcontroller. And before we can measure the internal temperature of the microcontroller, we have to do a couple of things here. We have to enable ADC8, which is labeled temperature sensor, and we'll have to enable the internal 1.1 volt reference voltage. Now to do this we have to configure one of the internal registers. Okay this is the register that we have to configure to enable the internal temperature sensor and it's called ADMUX 
and it's an 8-bit register and its address location is hex 7c. Now to select the 1.1 voltage reference we have to set bit 6 and 7. Now to select ADC 8 channel we have to set bit 3 and reset bits 0, 1, and 2. Okay here's the code running on my nano to monitor the internal temperature of the microcontroller. So the first thing we see here I'm assigning address values to all my registers and then here I'm selecting ADC 8 so what I do I clear the AD MUX register so they're all zeros then I set bits 6 and 7 and that will, that will select a 1.1 volt reference voltage and then I set bit 3 which would select ADC 8. Now if we go down to the word called question mark temp when I type that on the keyboard it will actually show me the temperature of the internal temperature of the microcontroller and there's my equation there that I plotted off off the graph and you can see I've changed the value from 250 to 256 because I calibrated it to ambient temperature and it was six degrees off so what I did I had the Arduino Nano off unpowered for about an hour then I powered it up and quickly took a, I took a temperature reading before it could heat up and then I calibrated to the ambient temperature so it was, it was six degrees too hot so I, I, uh, I took it down so I, I changed this value to 256 and after about 10 minutes of running the Arduino Nano the internal temperature rose about five degrees so it was actually five degrees hotter than ambient temperature it was running at a normal temperature so that's the code there it's written in fourth so it's interactive so I can monitor the internal temperature of the microcontroller okay I have a program running on the Nano that is displaying the internal temperature of the microcontroller now it's been running for about 20 minutes and the temperature has increased about five degrees above ambient and it leveled off to that normal operating temperature and I've loaded down some of the GPIO one at a time and I could actually make the temperature internal temperature increase as I load down the GPIO so I have some cold spray and a heat gun and I'll apply some external temperature changes to the microcontroller and you can watch how it reacts okay I have a program running on the Nano that is displaying the internal temperature of the microcontroller on the screen and I can apply some external heat and cooling to the microcontroller using a heat gun and cold spray and we can monitor what's happening internally so I'll give it some heat you can see it going up Now I'll give it some cold spray and I'll bring it down. Okay, that's a little demonstration how external heating and cooling affects the internal temperature of the microcontroller. Okay, the Atmega 328P-AU microcontroller has an internal temperature operating range of minus 40 degrees C to plus 85 degrees C. Now this is a guarantee by the manufacturer that the microcontroller will work between these two temperature limits. Now what happens if you go beyond these limits? Well then there's no more guarantee by the manufacturer that will work properly. You could go to 86 degrees, 87 degrees, it will still probably work but your chances of failing will increase, your reliability will go down and the operating life will decrease. So what actually happens when you go beyond these limits? What actually happens inside the microcontroller that causes the microcontroller to fail? Okay inside the microcontroller there are many PN junctions which make up the diodes and the transistors that work inside the microcontroller. Now a PN junction is just some silicone which has been doped with impurities to cause a P-type and an N-type and together we have a PN junction which is basically a diode. Now if you forward bias a PN junction the depletion region in the middle narrows and enables current to flow 
through the p-n junction in a forward direction. Now if you reverse bias the p-n junction, the depletion region widens and doesn't let any current flow in the reverse direction, or it'll just get leakage current, a very small amount of current. Now when the temperature rises in the microcontroller, it affects the doping on the p-n junction, and the leakage current will increase. It will increase to a point where the leakage current will equal the forward current, and what we have left basically is a resistor. So that when we have that happen, the diode and the transistor will fail because of, because of this leakage current, and the microcontroller will fail. Now if we go in the other direction, if we go if, when the temperature drops, it affects the doping on the transistor or on the, on the PN junction, and the doping cannot ionize anymore. So it can't create any carriers. Now when we inject base current into the transistor, we're injecting carriers into the transistor to cause a, a larger current flow in the collector. And that's our HFE or beta of the transistor. Now when, when it gets too cold, the doping cannot ionize and we've got a condition called freeze out. Now when freeze out happens, there are no more carriers can be injected into the transistor and the transistor will fail and the microcontroller will fail. Okay, if your project is going to be used in a harsh temperature environment, it would be good to monitor the internal temperature of the microcontroller to keep it within its temperature limits. Now if you see the temperature approach or try to exceed the temperature limits, you could use your GPIO to turn on a heating source or cooling source to bring the temperature back into its limits. Now if you can't do that, then you've got to go into shutdown. So if your microcontroller is controlling a machine, you can shut it down safely and then shut down the microcontroller itself. So the, having the ability to monitor the internal temperature of the microcontroller lets you shut down your project safely.